Um, so good afternoon. Uh, my name is Carolina Montanha Garces. Uh, I'm 22 years old. I'm in the fifth semester of civil engineering. Uh, and um, I'm here to show the, to present the, the project qualifying students in private and public schools from Pucarana for the OB map. Uh, the collaborators are Davi Henrique Cudia Victor, Lucas Augusto, Mirella Marchiori, and the coordinators are teacher Dr. Daniel Gonçalves and the teacher Dr. Thiago Gentil. Um, so for you to understand our project, I need to introduce you to how things work here in Brazil, like in the universities and uh, the project uh, I, I participate. So uh, I need you to know what is a federal university. The goals of UTFPR is that, uh, I will translate it, is a technology federal university of Paraná. Uh, the goals of, of the project. So first, uh, I need to understand what's a federal university. Um, and the federal university is an institution regulated and maintained by the federal government to the Ministry of Education and offers public and free education. Uh, to the resources offered by the federal government, these universities make the maintenance, funding, and payment of student assistance. Uh, the entrance to these institutions is made by SISU, Unified Selection System, from the National High School uh, Exam Scores, which is a test applied throughout Brazil that allows the entrance to public universities. I attached here a photo of Brazil highlighting the Paraná state. Uh, and then I separated an Im image of Paraná highlighting the 13 campus of uh, the UTFPR. So you can see here is Parana, uh, Apucarana uh, state, oh, Apucarana campus, uh, where I'm in and the pro project occurs. Um, now it's pretty important you to understand the goals of the UTFPR. Uh, the public university is an important space of production, accumulation, and dissemination of knowledge. Uh, and it's based on three interrelated bases, teaching, research, and extension. Many of them manage university hospitals with the exclusive care of single health system patients, uh, manage museums, library, uh, historic collections, provide legal and engineering service, among others, in a manner accessible to the population. Besides, offering basic education, dental and psychological assistance, language courses, among others, open to the external community. Also have research and extension initiatives that also benefit the students. Uh, here's an image that describes how uh, teaching, research and extension complete themselves because through teaching, you manage research and can also provide extension projects. So you can do more researching to pro provide more knowledge to share through teaching or extension projects. So the cycles repeats. And all this is valid so that the students become even more creative and complete professionals for the job market and the population receives back their taxes converted in knowledge and several benefits. Um, to finish the introduction, let's see what the goals of, the, of our project are. Um, we want to reinforce the teaching of mathematics and logical reasoning to raise the scores of students in Mathematical Olympics with a focus on OB math, as well as improve performance in, in schools. Uh, attached here, we have a picture of the advertising of the OB map and another math uh, Olympic called Brazilian Logical Reasoning Olympic uh, that we try to influence the registered students uh, for our project to participate as well during the year. Um, now, um, we are going to initiate the methodology and uh, with the topics uh, schedule, material construction, room division, test application, logical reasoning games application, and how the PB Junior originated. It's a, top, a specific topic uh, and uh, uh, it's related to the students that we provide this assistance and their contribution to the project, the contribution of the PB Junior uh, to the project. Uh, they schedule uh, the, pro uh, let's, uh, the project uh, took place from 8 to 11.30 a.m. at the UTFPR campus on Saturdays, uh, where they first uh, happened the resolutions of this prepared by volunteers. Afterwards, a break for the children to interact and talk since they come from different schools and it's uh, necessary for the children to farm bonds so they can have a pleasing environment inside the room. 
And at last, uh, we played games of logical reasoning that were created by students of PBQ Junior and also purchase games. Here you can see uh, a picture of uh, example of the create, created game that was applied and also an image of a purchase game that also was applied to the children. Uh, now the room divisions. Uh, the students were sorted by age into different classrooms. Uh, we had to divide them because the Open Map Olympic has three levels divided by age. Uh, we work just with the first and second levels that are students of the sixth and seventh year from, the 11, from 11 to 12 years old, resulting in the level one of the Olympics and the students of the eighth and ninth year from 13 to 14 years old, uh, resulting in the level two of the Olympics. Here we have a picture uh, of the project being executed here uh, this year before the COVID. And in the class, uh, here we have uh, the class of level one at uh, Thatched, and uh, here we have uh, a picture of the level two class. Uh, the material construction is a very important topic. Uh, in total, we, we have to, uh, 27 students uh, that were chosen to be tutors. Uh, they were separating two groups of four so that each Saturday will be a different group when turning the children. Uh, the tests were based uh, on past editions of OBMAP and separated by subject, geometry, arithmetic, and combinatorial analysis and probability. Uh, the tutors would have to separate specific questions of each subject to compose the lists. On average, each volunteer prepared uh, three lists of six questions. Um, here uh, we have a geometric test of level one. Uh, you can see it's colorful, the questions are short, and I can assure you that's easier than the next level. Uh, each test contains six questions which were solved on the board after giving the children's time uh, to try to solve them on their own. And uh, individual, individual questions could also be answered by the tutors. Um, now we have a picture to show a combinatorial analysis and probability test of level two. It works exactly the same way the level one, but we can find difference about it, like the questions are harder and it's less colorful, for example. Uh, to encourage the resolution of the list, uh, the students who finished first were elected as leaders of the future teams of the games uh, that will be applied after the break. Um, so after the break, uh, games were applied and they were chosen accordingly to the subject that had been deal with and the tests. Attached, it, we have two pictures of the project working this year before the COVID. First one is a child playing in auto do rush, uh, means rush time, a purchase game, and she was pretty good at it. She could solve the hardest puzzle on the deck. Uh, and the second one is a picture of level two, uh, where children were working on civil war as teams. So they should discuss with their team before making moves, it's simulating the logical arguing uh, uh, that is needed uh, to the second phase uh, to the OBMAP Olympics, uh, where the participants have to explain writing the logical thoughts for the resolution of the test. Um, here we have a picture of two games created by the Pubic Junior that stimulate the logical reasoning and can easily be made at home with the, with the parents, for example. Uh, these games are applied also in other uh, projects involving mathematics in the university. Its creation are really important because uh, they were made by children to children. Uh, most, most of the games have articles written by the child who made it. Yes, a 13 year child made a, a, wrote an article by, uh, with, the, with the game that he, they created. Uh, explaining uh, how to, to make it and how to play uh, at home. Um, you can be asking yourselves about the origin of Big Junior. Uh, I'll try to explain a little bit of, uh, of it now, right now. In 2019, a national call for proposal was launched at the CNPQ National Council of, for Scientific and Technological Development a government agency linked to the Ministry of Science and Technology uh, with the purpose of encouraging scientific and technological research and the training of Brazilian researchers who would choose five projects to contemplate with scholarships of uh, 100 reais, it's almost uh, $19. Uh, 
uh, for the six chosen students. Uh, the coordinator, Daniele, uh, competed and was contemplated with one of uh, these scholarships. Uh, you can also be asking about the contribution for this project. I will explain it to you. Uh, the students uh, of Big Junior was, were previously students who participated in the project, uh, who were willing to participate in a selection process uh, that involved the elaboration of logical reasoning games and that from the entrance to the university has been working with research and, and helping the production of content and games that can be assembled at home with recycled material or low cost to apply in the project. Uh, now we finally got into the results. Uh, in order to prove the effectiveness of the project, uh, we've made a research with the volunteers and, and also a comparison of the number of medalists since uh, 2016 where the project was initiated. So about the, the, uh, the research, we ask it to the volunteers some important questions. I separate some I thought important. Uh, first, we have a gender graphic and we can see that we have uh, 14 female and 13 male volunteers, which is balanced. Uh, so the second graphic is a graduation course and civil engineering here. Uh, has a highest number of uh, comparative with the other courses we have, like chemistry, engineering, and textile engineering, right here. Uh, to finish, we have uh, the probability of the volunteers followed up an academic career. The medium response uh, was uh, is winning, so maybe with the project, a higher number of college students can change their minds and to follow an academic career, or at least have an experience in this area so to get a conclusion of what they want for life through this experience. Uh, I also separated the volunteers testimonial with their expectation with the project and most of them say they wanted to improve their abilities of teaching and others say they wanted to open themselves to the possibilities and try to uh, know more people with that because they were closed in the university. So you can, you can read it if you like the, the student testimony. And afterwards, if you want me to read it uh, with more time, I can read it for you. Um, now we have a table with the level here, quantity of medals and uh, quantity of honorable mention and the sum of warden, a warden. Uh, to first to level one, we can see that since 2016, we have improved the quantity of medals and honorable mentions as well as in the level two. Highlighting the awarding, uh, you can see better the improvement of both levels uh, since the project started. Uh, remembering that uh, this number is just from Apucarana. Um, here we have uh, the same topics, level, year, quantity of medals, quantity of honorable mention, but uh, here we have a, a summator of both levels. So adding the medals and other mentions, we have the, the total awarding uh, and we are glad to share that since uh, 2016, the number of awarding in Apucarana has doubled. Um, so the conclusion, we, we can say that the university extension is of extreme importance for universities, uh, bringing professional growth opportunities to our students. After the implementation of the project, uh, there was a great development of the students and monitors who were able to improve their individual and collective skills. As a result of this improvement, the number of medals in Nobumap address to Apucarana has increased, uh, thereby showing that the project has achieved its purpose. Here are the references, and uh, I'm open for questions. Thank you for presenting. Uh, that was excellent. I know we didn't get a whole lot of questions. I apologize, but a, it was very good. We have uh, another 15 minutes, right? In this session before, uh, so. Yes. 
we can either have a discussion <laughs> if there are questions uh, or we can close the session and uh, maybe meet again for session six uh, at 12.30, GMT minus four. I guess I could ask about, this was about the um, mathematics instruction. Um, you uh, have you looked at I, I I like the work by Carol Dweck on um, mindset and they find uh, which is known as like implicit theory of intelligence uh, and so what it what the work on that subject finds is math is an area where this applies quite frequently where some people um, they will feel often being inculcated as a, a gender stereotype as well that oh I'm just not a, a math person. And that's called a fixed uh, mindset or a fixed um, implicit theory of intelligence versus a um, growth mindset, which is where you believe you can get better by practice, you know, by learning. And so what's usually found is if someone believes that, oh, your intelligence is fixed, you can't improve it, they're not able to learn as effectively. And you could even give them like a little brief exercise that tells them oh your brain cannot get any better or you could tell them oh you could learn math if you if you just apply yourself and get a different outcome in how well they do even like fmris will show the brain lighting up differently if someone believes they can learn and improve did you see any sort of um from like students some of them saying oh i just can't do it uh like in brazil uh we have sort of a difficulty with math so uh most most of the the, the children that come to us uh they're they are like pushed by their parents to try to learn more math so uh they they come to us and they say ah my 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 dad may uh make i uh made me come here and uh, I, I try to make the, the environment good and pleasure to them. So first they, they don't like math, but uh, almost uh, um, all children go uh, after the first class, they, they want to come back to learn more. So uh, they see they can do it. They, they can uh, uh, resolve the, the list, they can, uh, they can, uh, like have a, 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 a pleasure with math. So if you see here, um, we have a testimony uh, of one of the one of the the collaborators of uh, volunteers. Uh, uh, they they say uh, they want to enhance the team skills and encourage young people to discover the beauty of math and. Yes. Uh, yeah, to, to be able to contribute in the teaching of maths, knowing that there is a great lack of interest and a certain fear coming from the students in this area, being able to show that we can learn in the other ways besides the dual methods. So uh, I can say they, they first say, I can do it. So then they say they, they want to do it. So I can say. Yeah. That. Yeah, that is excellent. That's excellent. I think that shows a change. Um, and I, there was another presentation where I believe someone, uh, the librarians from Jacksonville State mentioned um, threshold concept. And that is another one that I think is relevant to mathematics, which is by um, some authors from England, um, the UK, that they find like, there's a sort of a quantum leap or like a aha moment in a lot of um, learning where you learn a concept uh, like all at once, but before you didn't get it and all of a sudden you can understand it. There's a lot of that in, in math. Uh, I'm kind of rambling on, but I just wanted to have a little more discussion because we don't have too many questions from other mm. uh, attendees. But I'll leave it up to uh, Maria if you'd like to say anything else or uh no I, i'm just wondering uh, I'm, I'm i'm just wondering whether as it, because you put this interesting um link on the uh in the chat oh yeah and this I'm is a link that i just found on google yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's about the um the math uh exam 
Brazilian Mass Olympiad, which is what uh, Carolina was uh, presenting about. So I, I thought it was a little interesting follow up mm -hmm. for people who don't know much about it, like I, me. Uh, I can explain to you that the, the Open Map Olympics, uh, we have two phases. So the first phase you have just to, to put the IX on the, the questions. And the second phase you have to, to write down the, your thoughts, of, uh, logical thoughts about the question. So when the, 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 the children pass the second phase, they, they get really excited to, to do more, to can, uh, get a medal or, or something, or get inside the university that the Pibiki journals uh, are made. They were uh, before students uh, met our students. So after they, they, they can do research inside the university with us with 13, 14 years. So, uh, it's it's really it's really good for them. So they they get really excited about it. Yeah, and that goes along with gamification too. It helps to make the um, learning experience more interesting and competitive. In this case, I think it's excellent. I always want to engage with the learners and like have more uh, multiple modalities of learning like visual and uh, auditory at the same time. Um, I've done some work Sorry, in instructional I would like design. To ask Carolina. I would like to ask Carolina how long has it been going on and how long is it going to go on for? Uh, I've been in thoughts on that. It's a hard question because uh, here in Brazil we have a, a problem with the teachers, uh, college teachers that want to do more than just teach their, their subject. So uh, I'm glad to work with this teacher, Daniel and, and Thiago, uh, because they, uh, she has like nine projects. She works a lot with uh, a lot of volunteers, a lot of uh, people. So she's a rare person. So now she had a baby. So she's a licensing and maternity, mater, I don't know how to say it. She is of, uh, of a maternity, uh, maternity leave. And um, she is the, the one on, that want to do more. So she's, she's I don't know it's, if the project go on uh, on the next year. So I mm. hope it, it's a problem.